we don't believe it. When the state decides to withdraw its civil suit, it sends a message of impunity. The investigation is officially continuing, but the government does not really want to tackle the system. As the Sahel region became a hotbed of violent extremism, Niger, a West African country, embarked on a massive military buildup with the backing of the US. Between 2011 and 2019, the country spent about 1 billion US dollars on its defense sector. But then, a confidential government audit obtained by the Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project, OCCRP, revealed that nearly a third of that money was diverted into shady international arms deals. The audit, which covered eight years of military spending, exposed how corrupt officials and brokers exploited the system to enrich themselves at the expense of the public funds. The U.S. had contributed almost $240 million to Niger's military budget over the same period. The audit, conducted by the Inspection General de Arms, an independent body that oversees the armed forces, found irregularities with contracts worth over $320 million out of the $875 million in military spending it reviewed. The auditors discovered that more than 76 billion West African francs had been lost to such corruption. That's enough money to build hundreds of schools, hospitals, and roads in a country like Niger, ranked one of the poorest countries in the world. They found that a significant portion of the equipment procured from international firms, including Russian, Ukrainian, and Chinese state-owned defense companies, was either grossly overpriced, not delivered as promised, or obtained without undergoing a competitive bidding process. But who is behind this massive theft of public funds? Who is the notorious arms dealer who hijacked Niger's budget and enriched himself at the expense of the nation? This individual is one of the most powerful and influential men in Niger. He has connections to the highest levels of the government, the military, and the business elite. He also has ties to foreign governments and companies, especially from Russia, Ukraine, and China, who supply him with weapons and equipment. He amassed a substantial personal fortune which grew and grew. Reports indicate that he owns multiple luxury flats in Prague, Czech Republic, including a penthouse overlooking the Vltava River which he acquired in 2015 for $1.5 million. He also possesses at least one Pied de Terra in Paris. In fact, he is considered one of the wealthiest individuals in his country, to the extent that the government of Niger owes him a significant sum of money. But wait, don't you ever get to think that this is a story about Niger? It is just not it. This is a story about how a ruthless and greedy individual can manipulate a system and rob a nation of its resources and dignity. It is a diegesis about how the international community can turn a blind eye to the suffering of millions of people and the violation of human rights. An expose revealing how the arms trade has fueled conflict, violence, and instability not only in Niger but Africa. This is about one of the fiercest barons of Africa, Abubakar Hima. Amidst the bustling energy that permeated the offices of the Association Alternatives Espacer Citoyens, that is Citizen Space Alternatives, located just a stone's throw away from the sandy racetrack of Niamey, a young man would arrive on his Japanese motorbike. The presence of this young entrepreneur, Abubakar Hima, and his distinctive bike became a familiar sight in the community, especially among those who knew the association's director, Musa Changori, who was a community figure. Although Hima was a student at a vocational school, learning the intricacies of the business world, he had already started his life as an entrepreneur. Described as discreet, reserved, and trouble-free by those who knew him, Hima earned a reputation as someone who caused no grievances. People who knew him said, no one had any complaints about him. Back then, Hima had not yet adopted the moniker's party boob or fear style that would later become the nicknames associated with him. At that time, he was just an unassuming presence, someone you might encounter around the office or at the central market without paying much attention or even noticing him. Like many young Nigerians who grew up during the presidency of Ibrahim Bear Menesora in the late 1990s, Hima took on odd jobs, and his parents were content to let him do so. Despite having recently obtained his scientific baccalaureate at Lycée Boso, 
Following his time as a student at Lycée Issa Corambi, Hima could barely count the number of kilometers he had covered on his motorbike. The young Hima later found a place to live in the Koroja district in the capital southwest, but he frequently visited the neighborhood of Abidjan, where his family resided, as well as the bustling central market. It was there that he began his entrepreneurial journey, selling small calendars and other printed materials. At Alternatives Espacer Citoyens, Hima often spent time with his friend Wilfried, a journalist from Benin who was responsible for the association's desktop publishing operations. Wilfried, who is now deceased, played a pivotal role in assisting Hima with creating his calendars and business cards. In those early days, Hima wasn't proficient at the printing business, so he often came to the association's offices for help, banking on the kind gestures of Musa Changui. Soon but slowly, Hima began to make his mark. From customer to customer and from thousands of CFA francs to thousands of CFA francs, he built up a clientele. As political shifts occurred, including the assassination of Minnesota during the Dauda Malam Wankes coup d'etat and the rise of Mamadou Tanja as president, Hima recognized the importance of establishing connections within the country's elite. By the year 2000, Hima, like other ambitious individuals, offered his services to members of the National Assembly. It was through this endeavor that Hima caught the attention of Habi Mohamedou Salisu, an elected representative from Tahua and the first quester of the movement National Poor en Société du Development, MNSD, the party of then Prime Minister Homa Amadou. In fact, Salisu, who served as an advisor to President Mohamed Bozoum, explained that when the National Assembly needed to re-equip itself after the 1999 coup, Hima was one of the young movers and shakers who was called in. Although Solisu clarified that while Hima was not the only one to benefit from these opportunities, the young entrepreneur, who was in his 20s, utilized his network to establish connections with key figures in Amadou's government. As time went on, Hima secured several printing contracts, some of which came from neighboring Benin, and also supplied large quantities of paper for significant sums of money. The timing was fortuitous. Solisu held a prominent position in the Ministry of Secondary Education, allowing Hima start to continue its ascent. Hima's business ties extended to other ministries as well. Solisu even attested that, at the time, he was getting small contracts worth, up to 15 million CFA francs. During Amadou's tenure as Prime Minister, Hima carved out a reputable position for himself. He built a relationship with the Prime Minister, who was undoubtedly considering the possibilities that lay ahead. Within the MNSD, Amadou had garnered a loyal following of devoted supporters who collaborated with him on his post-Tanger political endeavors. In 2003, as one of the most influential figures in Niamey, Amadou set his sights on the presidency of Niger, he vigilantly monitored the opposition, especially the Part 1 Nigerian Paul Law Democracy E.T. Lu Socialism, PNDS, and its leader, Mohamedou Isufu. The latter had the support of one of Maman Abu, a journalist, party activist and owner of Nouvelles in Primaries du Nigel, NIN, Niamey's biggest printing company. Amadou was skeptical of their relationship so he decided to counter it by launching his own printing firm. For Homa Amadou's loyal followers, the idea behind this venture was to possess their own printing company, thereby preparing for the post tanja era that loomed ahead. It was envisaged as a tool to consolidate power but the caprices of politics intervened. Hima saw the opportunity within this power tussle and seized it by setting up in Primary Du Plateau, a printing business that remains active today. This enabled him to gain access to other influential circles within Niamey. But this did not quite spell the demise of Hima's ambitious entrepreneurship career. He had already embarked on a different trajectory. Towards the final moment of the Tanja era, he secured a contract with Mohamane Musa, the Minister of Agricultural Development, to supply a crop dusting aircraft to the Nigerian government. By this time, Hima, now commonly referred to as Patibu, had surprisingly amassed considerable wealth. In 2005, he cemented his fortunes by marrying Somira, one of the daughters of the late Ibrahim Bear Menesara, former Nigerian military officer, and the fifth president of Niger who ruled from 1996 until his assassination in 1999. Interestingly, Samira's mother, Clemens Beer, happened to be a neighbor of Hima's father, Masi Hima, a prominent official in the livestock ministry commonly known as Major. The families shared a long-standing acquaintance. 
he must carefully capitalize on this connection. It opened doors for him within Naomi's elite circles. The astute entrepreneur also cultivated a close relationship with another influential political figure, Abdul Labo, a former defense minister under President Mohamed Osman in 1994. Labo subsequently held positions in the Equipment Ministry from 2000 to 2002, the Sports Ministry from 2002 to 2004, and eventually the Hydraulics Ministry from 2004 to 2007. As the second-in-command at the Convention Democratic ET Socialist CDS, which was allied with the MNSD, Labo had forged formidable networks in Nigeria, which happened to be a significant financier of Nigerian political affairs. Numerous Nigerian personalities provided financial backing to political parties in Niger, including Mohamed Osman CDS. Abdul Labo played a pivotal role in orchestrating these connections. His roots trace back to the Moradi region, an economic hub with strong ties to Nigeria. It was through Abdul Labo's regional networks that Abubakar Hima transformed into the Pati Boob, the arms baron we recognize today. Amidst the backdrop of Mohamedou Isufu's presidential victory in 2011, doubts arise about Hima's fate. Would he disappear, having amassed a fortune through his connections with Amadou's entourage? Surprisingly, the answer is a resounding no. Hima's involvement in politics was never his intention, as affirmed by a close friend. The question of his association with Homer Amadou loomed from the beginning, but the allure of Hima's contact and the state's substantial debts to him prompted a continuation of their collaboration. Additionally, Labo, an ally of the new head of state, assumed a ministerial role in the government, deepening the entanglement of interests. Labo's frequent visits to Nigeria, despite causing frustration to his boss President Isufu with his repeated absences, shed light on the complex dynamics at play. Acting as a self-proclaimed messenger between Isufu and former Nigeria President Goodluck Jonathan, Labo's influence extended beyond borders. His connections facilitated the entry of Hima into Nigeria, with Labo's address book boasting the name of Sambo Dasuki, the son of a sultan of Sokoto in Nigeria, an ex-military official from the north and architect of Olushegun Obosenjo's victory in the 1999 Nigerian presidential election. Dasuki is not just anybody, he is a prominent figure with a rich political history. After a political dry spell in the early 2000s, which nevertheless allowed him to devote himself to business, he returned to the political scene and in 2012 was appointed National Security Advisor to Goodluck Jonathan. He was one of President Goodluck Jonathan's right-hand men, in charge of re-equipping his troops confronting Boko Haram rebels in Nigeria's north. His networks extended as far as Eastern Europe, from where Nigeria was supplied with helicopters and other combat aircraft. Desuki played a pivotal role in Hima's foray into the arms and military equipment business. Exploiting Dasuki's networks, Hima established a significant presence in Eastern Europe, particularly in the Czech Republic, Ukraine, and Russia. By 2010 Hima had made the leap into the arms business from Nigel to neighboring Nigeria, where he established companies that would play key roles in the deals auditors scrutinized in his home country. Many of Hima's arms deals were conducted under a 2013 national security law that permitted Nigel's defense spending to be carried out through direct negotiations with any company, bypassing the need for public tender processes. However, in 2016, Nigel repealed this law and introduced a new one that required a more transparent procurement process. Unfortunately, by the time the new law came into effect, much of the damage had already been done. The audit revealed that a majority of the sales identified had evaded scrutiny from oversight bodies within the Ministry of Defense and the Ministry of Finance, which were supposed to provide input under the 2013 law. Additionally, crucial documentation, such as the prices offered by different bidders, was missing from the tenders. One notable deal facilitated by HEMA in 2016 involved Nigel's Ministry of Defense purchasing Tumi 171 SH military transport and assault helicopters from Rosoboran Export, Russia's state-owned defense company. The acquisition, which included maintenance and ammunition, cost Niger 55 million euros, approximately $54.8 million. However, the audit conducted by the Inspection General revealed that the purchase had resulted in an overpayment of about $19.7 million. The auditors determined that fraud and corruption had inflated the prices.
as the scale of HEMA's operations grew, so did the sums involved along with the commissions and kickbacks. His foreman Labo was subsequently arrested in 2014 for a child trafficking case, yet this did not implicate HEMA, because he had a pragmatic approach to relationships, motivated solely by self-interest and always cleared any loopholes that would earn him. Therefore, Labo did not take HEMA down with him. While his origins trace back to the MNSD party, the HEMA system became intensely linked to the PNDS party, with successive defense ministers since 2011 coming from the latter party. This inner circle propelled him into becoming the main supplier of arms to Nigel's Ministry of Defense under Mohamedou Korijo from 2011 to 2016, and then continued under Kala Mutori from 2016 to 2019. Hima's ascent as the primary arms supplier to Nigel's Ministry of Defense further underscores the depth of his influence. The PNDS, initially compelled to work with Hima in 2011, received ample compensation for their cooperation. Hima cultivated close ties with military leaders, even as his brother served as an officer in the army. He boasted of his direct relationship with President Isufu, while the president's son, Sonny, who was Hima's neighbor in Niome, occupied influential positions within the government, including being Nigel's oil minister. Financial arrangements, such as budget adjustments, ensured Hima's continued presence and made it difficult for him to disappear. To sever ties with the system, the state would have had to settle its debts with him entirely. According to estimates, the state owes Hima several dozen billion CFA francs, an immense sum that speaks to the extent of his influence. Hima's lawyer network, built on a system of patriotic allegiance, allowed him to secure over three-quarters of the arms supply contract signed by the Ministry of Defense since 2011, as revealed by an audit conducted by the General Inspectorate of the Armed Forces in 2020. The audit shed light on the intricate workings of Hima's system, which found its epicenter in Nigeria. Through various companies he established in the country, such as TSI and Bride Defcon, Hima conducted lucrative business dealings. Bride Defcon, in particular, secured contracts exceeding $142 million with the Nigerian Defense Ministry, raising concerns about the fairness of the tender process. Investigators discovered that Hima controlled the two other bidders, Motor Siege and Aerodyne Technologies, suggesting collusion. Bride Defcon in fact won a $4.2 million bid to build a hangar for President Isufu's plane. According to investigators, the tender was rigged the two other bidders for the same contract, which are Motasich, based in Algeria, and Aerodyne Technologies, registered in a free zone of the United Arab Emirates, were all owned and operated by Hima. He subsequently won other government tenders with Motasich, including a $11.4 million arms supply contract. Hima's web of influence extended beyond arms contracts. He leveraged his Nigerian company, TSI, as the official representative of Rosoboran Export, the Russian state arms export company, in Nigel. This allowed him the possibility of intervening on both sides of the contract, as an agent of the client, the government, and at the same time, a representative of the Russian supplier. This was one of his greatest tricks in hijacking money and hiking arm deals. Through this arrangement, Nigel's defense ministry acquired helicopters from Rosoboran Export, fulfilling their needs through him as well-established networks. Hima used similar shady techniques, too for other deals. He used companies under his control to submit fake bids to create fictitious and unfair competition. However, the audit conducted by the Army's General Inspectorate revealed a more troubling reality. The purchase and maintenance of the helicopters, for example, incurred a surcharge of $19.5 million, raising questions about financial impropriety. Similar cases emerged concerning other contracts signed by Hima's Bride Defcon, suggesting a pattern of misconduct and potential corruption. Although a judicial investigation was initiated, the state eventually withdrew its civil suit, claiming to have been reimbursed for the surcharges and having received all the equipment paid for but not delivered. Yet, doubts persist, especially considering the close relationship between Hima and key figures within the government. But they couldn't conceal the inherent corruption, not when Hima has to deliver 100 cars, you'll notice a minister's own fleet swells by 10 vehicles delivered. Funny enough, Hima's lawyer, Mark Lubihon during this time, stressed that overcharging is not an offense under Nigerian law and disputed the accusations of illegal enrichment.
Through Hima's political influence in the defense establishment, with his company TSI in Nigeria, he gained power of attorney on behalf of the Ministry of Defense. This gave him the ability to approve weapons deals and issue end-user certificates, a type of document meant to ensure that weapons sold to one client are not passed on or resold to an unauthorized third party. This action violates the arms trade treaty that Nigel has signed, which states that end-use certificates can only be issued by relevant government ministries. The power to issue certificates himself gave him the ability to steer government contracts to his own companies or to his partners. It also allowed him to limit the amount of oversight included in the deal's terms, which removed the crucial safeguard that allows authorities to know who they are selling arms to. Consequently, Hima's wealth grew exponentially, enabling him to acquire luxurious properties in Prague and establish relationships with influential figures in Paris and Africa. Hima's residence in Nigel's capital is an ostentatious display of wealth in a country that ranks dead last on the United Nations Development Index, which measures a nation's well-being based on indicators like life expectancy and access to education. Nigel's treasury is footing the bill for the country's military spending, which has grown as a percentage of the country's gross domestic product from less than 1% in 2009 to 2.5% in 2017, according to the World Bank. Hima also owns three apartments in the Czech capital, Prague worth over $2 million in total. He acquired them in 2015, first shelling out $1.5 million for a penthouse in the Dock Marina, a luxurious residential complex on the Vltava River that allows residents to park their boats near the entrance. He purchased two more apartments in the development in the following months. He also owns at least one Pai de Terra in Paris, where he established a relationship with Alexander Benalla, President Emmanuel Macron's former head of mission. Hima also has ties with Pascal Jeanine Pores, a businesswoman who is also an important figure in African and Middle Eastern circles. Hima's business interests in Prague go beyond property. His now defunct Nigerian company, Bride Defcon, frequently partnered with a Czech-registered firm with a similar name, Defcon S.A.O., in 2009, according to the audit. In 2017 and 2018, the Czech firm fulfilled a $33.6 million contract from Nagel's government to deliver 80 trucks manufactured by the Austrian firm Ster. Supposedly bidding against Defcon S.A.O. was the Algerian branch of Motasic. Bride Defcon submitted the bid on behalf of Motasic, which it controlled, in an apparent attempt to show the process was competitive. The ridiculous thing is that Motasic managers said it had never made such a bid, leading auditors to conclude that the company name had been usurped. These deals fueled Hima's luxury lifestyle and made him the most conspicuous of Nigel's illicit arms traders as he invested his profits abroad. Since the leaking of the audit by the Defense Ministry, Hima has kept a low profile. He only rarely visits his Naomi villas located in the vicinity of the presidency, leaving their management to his older sister Fati and to his mother, for whom he built a luxurious home in the Plateau neighborhood. But sooner than later, he became wanted by various governments. He can no longer set foot in Nigeria where he has another residence and has managed to get close to the recent predecessor of Nigeria's presidency, President Muhammadu Buhari, who once welcomed him for a visit. In December 2015, a few months after President Buhari acceded to power and the departure of Jonathan, Sambo Dasuki was arrested and accused of having embezzled nearly $2.1 billion through fake contracts for the delivery of helicopters, fighter planes and ammunition for the Nigerian army. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC, of Nigeria issued an arrest warrant for Hima, which they believe he participated in the fraudulent scheme with Sambo Dasuki. Hima's fear of arrest led him to avoid Nigeria and France, where legal troubles await him. In Abuja, he is under investigation by the EFCC for suspected fraud and embezzlement of nearly $10.9 million in public funds through another of his Nigerian companies, Societe d'Equipment International. However, his presence in Abidjan, Côte d'Ivoire, sparks speculation about potential high-level protection. Although he frequently changes his telephone number, he may nevertheless continue to conduct his illegal business. He operates across the sub-region, in Ghana, Togo, Benin, Senegal, Burkina Faso, Côte d'Ivoire, Guinea-Bissau and various other countries, while evading arrest warrants. 
The extent of his connections and influence in Abidjan remains a mystery, as does his alleged protection there. The reach of Hima's influence is far-reaching, with President Alassane Ouattara of Côte d'Ivoire having stayed in one of his villas during a summit. Even international entities such as the European Union and its military training mission have sought accommodations in his numerous villas. And yes, experts express that he appears untouchable, as no country in the region has responded to the Nigerian arrest warrant and neither could anyone put an end to his cartel despite the countless investigations and audits. Undeterred by the negative publicity surrounding the Defense Ministry's audit, Hima has established a new company called Privinvest in Niamey, Niger. Furthermore, he has restructured his business, moving Breed A Defcon from Abuja to Prague, where his contacts in Eastern Europe continue to assist. As a matter of fact, the audacity of Hima's influence is evident in an anecdote involving General Ibrahim Weli Karingama, who attempted to bypass Hima in negotiating arms contracts but was told that Hima, the fear spirit, was an unavoidable force. But the scariest of Hima's mischievous and deceitful schemes was yet to come. Earlier in the year 2022, a Senegalese state agency signed a deal to purchase $77 million worth of assault rifles, semi-automatic pistols, ammunition, and other weapons from an obscure local farm that had only been set up a few months prior. The farm, Levy Commercial Brokers, happens to have been established by Hima. But what was extremely surprising and overwhelming is that Senegal would endorse a major arms deal with a dealer who has been found wanting with numerous records of defrauding other governments. The dominance of the HEMA system is far from an end, but at this moment, we have to let you see through the secretive distribution key. To continue telling better stories of the realities of great African businesses and entrepreneurs through an unbiased and authentic lens, we implore you to subscribe, like, and share this video. We are African Business Fanatics.